This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. The Get Geeky Talk Tech. It is Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA, ready for the Awesome Cast episode 326. How are you guys doing out there? How are you doing, Awesome Nation? Uh, with me, hey, first of all, from uh, Studio C, he is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going on this fine Tuesday before Thanksgiving? Uh, fantastic, fantastic. And also, back in the studio is Dudders. Katie Dude is at K Dudders on the Twitter. I'm only here for the pizza. Only here for the pizza, <laughs> respectively. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Free Thanksgiving pizza party. <laughs> they need to do like a Thanksgiving pizza with like turkey and stuffing and mm, the gobbler mm. pizza, the gobbler pie. Mm. Yes. Or maybe. Yes. I would support this. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, of course, Katie is a social media person guru extraordinaire over at Scarehouse. Yes, I do social medias and uh, occasionally with some sidekicky shenanigans too. Yeah, yeah, and also gadget guru is John Tachilla at uh, Big Bank Big Bank International Incorporated. Also, also Big Back. Big Back, <laughs> Big Back. Yes, <laughs> and uh, of course myself. I'm a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area. And podcasting, lots of podcasting going on with Sorgatron Media, Psychic Media Services. So uh, let's get into the show. Hey, check first of all, check us out. We're live every Tuesday, live.awesomecast.net. No matter what technology we're using, you should go there because that may change here in the next few weeks. We've been using <laughs> Facebook Live next week. I'm not here. I'm not in the country. So we might be doing something a little bit different. That We're still working out the details of that. It might be a Google Hangout. But either way, the show is promised to still happen. So you should tune in around 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live.awesomecast.net. Something should be embedded, or it might just be a link, or just be like, go to our YouTube, or something like that. You'll find out then. It's a mystery to us, too. Uh, you can check everything out at awesomecast.net. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and, of course, um, on the Facebook page for Awesomecast and YouTube. I'm sorry, John. I keep seeing cars go by in my monitor behind you in that window. Oh. There goes one. <laughs> Don't move anything, but but I'm just saying, like <laughs> I'm not used to this like random movement happening on your screen. Um, so so it keeps catching the corner of my eye, and I'm thinking it's like an error prompt or something. So, uh, anyways, uh, back to it. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, uh, other things to promote, uh, and also check us out. We're currently on Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. after Funny Money on our friends, RiversEdgePGA.com. And please support the show over on Patreon. Uh, we got one Patreon supporter, uh, Mike Fedor. Uh, Mike Fedor's show on the Twitter has been uh, donating us for a good long time. Thank you so much for your support uh, there. Go check it out. We get a state of the awesome cast. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and you get to have that fuzzy feeling. Sometimes we bring you cookies. Uh, that has been known to happen in the past. So uh, thank you so much to the people that have joined us over there and our executive producers over the time. Uh, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Be, be our boss and you get some input. Uh, we listen to all our listeners, uh, but especially a little bit weighted if you're uh, on that Patreon as well. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Katie, let's go with you first. Hi. Um, if you've ever looked up a business on Google and you've noticed that they tell you the times of day that they're busiest, maybe you're wondering, oh, how busy is the cafe on Friday, you know, at seven o'clock, uh, they have now updated it so you can get real time. It hasn't quite kicked in yet, but it's supposed to be any time this evening, tomorrow, like within the next few hours. But Google will tell you in real time if someplace you're looking at is actually busy mm -hmm. and um, they will ask you, you know, it's, it's, it's a little busy. Um, is this true when you say correct or not correct? And, um, they, that way they'll be able to kind of keep up with that too. So you'll pay a part. It's kind of, it sounds very crowdsourced too, that they'll be able to uh, give you some live information to know whether or not you should go places or if you have time to stop places or if you have to wait in line. So this, is this going to be probably like, like I have to get into the app and, and actually interact with this in order for it to happen? 
it just you go to either Google or Google Maps. You look mm-hmm. up the place, and uh, I, I I use Slice on Broadway <laughs> as an example. Uh, so you look up Slice on Broadway, and today they're usually busy. Now they're usually a little busy, uh, the, but in the future it'll update and say live busy. And if you're there, if you're at that location, if they think you're at that location, they'll ask you whether or not it's actually busy. So how do like how do we get? How do I get in? Oh, okay. So I have something here. Actually, I brought up Slice on Broadway, and here's a little mm-hmm. visual here as there well. And they show they get pretty busy around uh, uh, the 6, 7 o'clock. And it's showing right now is highlighted in the 7 o'clock hour, mm-hmm. and which seems to be their busiest. So we, we get our, our, our podcast day pizza just in time for things to get crazy. So I can actually go in here and... It'll soon say live. It'll soon say live, and then I can actually... Uh, people typically spend 15 to 45 minutes here. So So do we think... Is this potentially currently like where are they getting this information from now i'm wondering because is this just like people that have the google maps and and it's just like oh i noticed you spend some time at slice on broadway just like kind of uh swarm the foursquare uh swarm app lets me know hey you didn't check into all these places and mm-hmm. basically anywhere that i spent like time in front of which a lot of times it's just places i've dropped people off in uber or I just parked my car for a while waiting for the next one. So, um, you know, yeah, like that, those kinds of things. Uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, I, that has to be what they're going with. Yeah, because we're, right? we're constantly sending information to Google. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, you have to know when going into this that you are constantly sending information to Google. If you spend X amount of time, it is your home. If you spend slightly less time, that is your work. <laughs> oh. Sorry for the dings. Apparently, we lost connection with Chilla. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so we will uh, work on that here in a moment, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, we'll, we'll try to get him back. But uh, he's stinging me. He's stinging me. Stinging me everywhere. We need to turn that off. Um, but uh, anyways, no, I think that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Why? <laughs> they keep going. They keep going. I can't turn them off. Um, but no, I, I think it's interesting. And again, kind of that that you know, building all that uh, crowdsource stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I do like the popular times. If you've ever used that, it, it's nice to kind of get an idea when you're going to a place for the first time, whether or not they're busy, especially if you're just like, oh, I just want to bounce in for a coffee or something quick for lunch. You know, mm-hmm. is this, is this their busy time? Cause uh, lunchtime varies and dinner time varies depending on location. So how are, how are they tracking who's where? Or is it based on check-ins? Is it based on we're guessing that they're just using the information. Like if you've ever, you know how Google and even Apple Maps and everything kind of figures out where you're at a location for a certain amount of time, they consider you at that location or they figure mm-hmm. out when you're at home or quote unquote work. I think it's probably just tracking your movements that way. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I like this. And I've actually used this multiple times for whether it's going to a restaurant or when we were doing the pod crawl um, to kind of figure out, you know, what bars were, were busiest when. Um, so, this, so this is really cool. I'm interested to see people's commentary and, and how accurate it is. But, uh, I mean, obviously they, they have data today. I'll, I'll be interested to see how the real time actually affects, affects a, a, a given location. Mm-hmm. What would be sad is if a place wasn't busy, but it registered as crowded, so it people didn't go there. Yeah, right, right. Like, like it affects that kind of thing. I also wonder how many people use that, but but I mean, as as many people are using just basically Google to to get place information. And I'm trying mm-hmm. to more and more. Uh, it, it absolutely makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. So definitely. Um, this is an aside, but. And it should, it's not my awesome thing yet, but we talked about several weeks ago. It's kind of related. Google Trips. Do you recall? Like you're going somewhere and you know how like if you're an inbox and I think Gmail might use this old bundle together. Oh, hey, you're going to this place. You know, here's all your reservation info and stuff, right? So mm-hmm. the if you download the Google t- Trips app on, on either platform, um, it will... You, you, it will actually show you like okay we we see you have airline information for well I'm going to Thailand this week right uh, mm-hmm. so it it popped it up and let me download so I don't have to worry about my data uh, in a foreign country as much uh, so now I have information for Bangkok and Phuket uh, Thailand available on my phone ready to go so I can search for whatever I need to. And there's stuff like, hey, it bundles your reservation info together, things to do, day plans. 
I can go through and star things. And very specifically on this trip, we have um, we have kind of a, a mapped out kind of uh, tours, I guess you could say. So mm-hmm. so I, I can pull up information and star all those places that I expect to go. Uh, so we can have information on that. So it, so I'm hoping to have a report. Hopefully that'll be my awesome thing of next week or the week after. So uh, so keep an eye out for that too. Does, does it grab the map data? I think it's. Let me see what it's doing. Because there's because there's some. I mean I I don't remember how to do it off the top of my head, and I'm sure you can Google it. There's ways in Google Maps to actually grab portions of of map data, so you don't have to download street level data while you're while you're roaming um so, so i thought that was pretty cool so you can actually cache google maps both platforms as well um i just can't remember if they do it automatically now or i think what you used to do is go to a location that you wanted to kind of store and then you type something special in the search bar or something like that and it yeah. would grab um, so, everything that was on the screen so if you zoomed out and then type something in then it would actually cache it down to the device up to a certain amount of mag or gig. I think I think it is because I'm pulling up like I pulled up the Grand Palace is someplace that I've tagged and it gives me open you know again it gives me open times. I wonder if it gives me when it's busy as well a little bit. No, but there's like reviews and stuff about it and it's a tourist attraction. It gives me uh, info and the website and and uh, all English, English language by the way. Uh, so and, and it does look like like I can go into the map and zoom in, but I don't know if this is cached or not necessarily i'll find out <laughs> so you know we'll see if that works too so all right let's roll around chilla what is your awesome hey, thing of the week just real quick and i apologize for interrupting i now have an off air up in the upper right instead of live just so you know don't worry about it okay don't worry um, about it so my awesome thing of the week and i've covered some of these devices kind of like this one um covered the ihome uh up uh, smart plug before, but this one is actually from, I'm guessing it's pronounced Kukik. Um, and it's a smart plug. It's, it's, it, I, I like it because of the price. I figure it's a good entry point for kind of getting into home automation. So for $34.99, you can get a single plug. Um, it will actually, uh, light up whether it's on or off, which I thought was, was nice. Uh, they do have a dedicated app. Um, so if you want to use their app and it's also home kit compatible, um, so it will work with the iOS 10 Home app, um, which is which is a pretty nice app. If you, if you have any of your devices, it shows them. You can separate them by room, and then you can interact with them um, via Siri or or via uh, widgets or via the the app itself. Um, the device it, when you're when you're buying these types of devices, devices at this cheaper price point don't don't usually power. Um, devices like air conditioners or coffee machines, um, et cetera, because um, they exceed the two kilowatt uh, constraint. So, but this does handle devices up to that two kilowatt um, power point. So, I, I think this is a nice, like I said, entry way to get into kind of home kit and home automation. Um, they also, you, you can't do it through the the home app. But it, they do have their own app um, that can show you daily power consumption so you can see, you know, is this device on? Is it off? Um, one of the things I'd also recommend when you're looking at these types of devices, and this one does have one, um, if they have an additional on-off button right on the plug. Um, I've learned that when you're trying to troubleshoot or, or if you're, your phone's not near you and you want to turn off a light but you want to make, make it so that the, the switch still works, um, or the plug piece still works. There's a button right on this device that allows you to, to plug the to, to turn it on or off. Um, we have a number of these types of smaller devices around the house that we actually kind of have almost on standby. Um, we use them for for controlling the outdoor lights at Christmas and the Christmas tree lights inside. Um, so these devices definitely come in handy. I also gave my sister. A device much like this because you can tell if it's on or off remotely um, and she kept forgetting to turn off her curling iron um, mm. so if she she got out the door and said to herself oh did I turn off the curling iron she didn't have to drive all the way back home she could check to see if the plug was on or off remotely and then turn it off had she left it on um, 
so there's there's about a billion and one uses for these types of small devices. Uh, this device also doesn't require Bluetooth. It can also hook into your home's Wi-Fi. Um, so having a Bluetooth connected device near this one isn't isn't important like a lot of the other devices. So highly the great stocking stuffer, great you know uh, entry point for someone that's not sure that if they want to get into this type of thing. It's it's a pretty cool device. That's awesome. I I, I love that idea. I, I, you know people. You know, the debate happens where, where, okay, is technology kind of making us smarter, stupid, or anything like that? I like technology that helps make up for my failings that I'm mm-hmm. probably never going to fix as a human being. Like forget, like the forgetfulness of the curling iron. You know how many times I've like had to drive back home when, from three blocks away because I'm like, did I lock the door? <laughs> you know, like did stuff I, like did that. Did I turn off the coffee pot? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, stuff like that. More and, and more you, people have Keurigs, but... If you still have a coffee pot, this this I mean even would work. With one but of those still, like like this. a lot of that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so anything like that that you're like, this is a thing that I keep messing up. How can I correct this? How can I be reminded to do things? Or you know, for me, reminders to help um, get new new habits to form, right? Uh, so I think that's a really cool thing, and I, and I love that this is like a less scary thing you can do to get into something like this. Yeah, these even work well for if you want to if you have a have a lamp like in your living room or near near somewhere where your entryway plug this lamp into it you can set it up so as you arrive home you can turn it on so you can see when you get inside um, we don't actually have necessarily have light switches for a lot of the the overheads near the front or back door mm-hmm. um, so these devices come in handy for this as well for that use case as well my, my mom uses something like this for um, her heater. She has one of those electric heater, kind of looks like a fireplace. Mm-hmm. And, and that's great because she can have that turned on before she gets home. Or after, that's something she doesn't want to leave while she's on at work all day. So it's like one less thing for her to worry about, too. Like, oh, shoot, I don't want to burn the house down. But it's great for that, that kind of pre-warming the house up, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Remote car starters are the greatest invention yes. ever. Yes. <laughs> if you're amazing. in Pittsburgh. So great. All right. So um, from there, okay, my awesome thing, I had the fortune uh, last minute to to go film uh, the AI X Prize, the IBM Watson AI X Prize. Uh, and uh, I had some footage here that will hopefully queue up. Um, but anyways, uh, but no, it was a really cool thing. Thanks, Kenny Chen, uh, for having us out there uh, to, to, to go cover that for them. Uh, so there'll be footage. Um, they'll do something with the footage in the next coming weeks. Uh, but no, it was a pretty good event. It, so it, this is, you know, if you've heard of the, the X Prize, like, like we, a lot of times, I think we hear of the Space X Prize, like the ones that 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 you know, like, hey, can we you know get a rocket to work and land and, and all that stuff? And it's like a couple million dollar prize or something like that. So this is again around artificial intelligence. And yes, I know a thing just fell behind me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways. But no, I, it was a, a pretty cool event, and, and, and it was kind of a kickoff keynote kind of thing uh, over at UPMC Enterprises, which is in the same in Bakery Square in the same building where uh, Google and a lot of other uh, uh, tech companies are uh, these days. Uh, so always re- really cool to to be there. And this is also this is also an event that I had the fortune of being in uh, for an, a UX uh, a conference in the past. Uh, so they had several several people there again from University of Pittsburgh. Uh, from uh, from formerly of Google, but now of, of uh, CMU, uh, they had uh, somebody from I think it's Rapid Flow Technologies. I'll, I'll check that in a second here, and uh, they each gave kind of lightning a, a keynote or, or quick talks about what they do. One of the guys from Uber was there. Uh, you know, wh- what are they doing currently with uh, artificial intelligence and kind of what's the future of it? Um, like I said, Adam Berger, so UPMC Enterprise. I thought that was interesting because they're um, trying to use AI to look at trends in uh, health, of course, but but being able to interpret like the information that they're receiving now, like people don't write this person has diabetes or or is diabetic or something like that, like not, that all means the same thing, but isn't written the same way by by doctors was one thing they were talking about. So getting that and 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 uh, uh, you know kind of in the proper way. Uh, uh, organizing that data to still be anonymous and and you know meet, meet standards and everything like that. Uh, mm-hmm. A professor of the University of Pittsburgh, um, uh, CEO of Rapid Flow Technologies. These guys have already done 
uh, for several blocks, especially over there around the Penn Avenue, uh, East Liberty area, I believe. Um, they are uh, putting intelligent cameras in to help the flow of traffic through Pittsburgh. And they're actually going to be partnering with the city to to take care of most of the major corridors through the middle of the city uh, um, in the coming years. So, and again, they've like dropped uh, emissions and and traffic flow um, by like twenty percent, twenty six percent, I think it was. So. so are those are those traffic cameras then? I guess kind of triggered to the to the to the stoplights. Yeah, yeah. So they're just at the stoplights, and then like they actually talk to each other. So like a one stoplight will know how much traffic is coming from the previous stoplights, and can can kind of time things a little better. So and even give priority access for things like emergency vehicles. Um, they're looking to actually connect them with the busing systems to make that more efficient as well. And again, part of this kind of connected city uh, philosophy that we've been seeing over the last uh, couple of years under the uh, Peduto Peduto administration uh, uh the mayor here in, in town and of course um one of the uh uber um uh jeff schneider uh of uh uber advanced technology center where they're doing the self-driving cars again talking about that and i love they're talking about like like oh you know the other cars are are the thing we should be scared of and then they went down to the strip the first time with a self-driving car and they said they said there were so many people who were just scared, just scared the crap out of us uh so <laughs> I, like like that that kind of thing that kind of perspective on something like that was pretty cool uh, but the main keynoter was uh, Andrew Moore, Dean School of Computer Science, CMU. Again, formerly of Google, worked on some of their AI, AI stuff there. Really excited. Like, and all these guys are really excited about the stuff that they're working on and what's possible and what's coming and everything like that. And there's some really cool uh, some really cool stuff. So this is, again, a, a project to inspire, okay, what's the next thing? What are the next problems to solve here as far as, as AI and everything like that? So I think that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so look out for that. Keep, uh, look into the X Prize. There's several X Prizes: uh, the artificial intelligence, the uh, space one, and there's several other ones around ecology and, and other aspects of uh, science. So yeah, it was really cool to just uh, see, um, you know, just be in a uh, room of super smart people uh, and hear what's going on with them. So good stuff. All right, guys. Shout out to our sponsor. But uh, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about what we're thankful for because it is Thanksgiving week. I like to admire, you know, just kind of give a little, give a little thanks to the technologies in our lives a little bit here. <laughs> and uh, a couple of you out there actually respond as well. And if you're in the Google chat, please also, or I'm sorry, the Facebook chat. What are we using these days? <laughs> the Facebook live chat. Uh, please let us know what you're thankful for as well. But big thanks. I'm thankful for the people that have been supporting us with the uh, uh, Perfect Pepperoni Pizza uh for P pittsburgh podcasting uh slice on broadway thank you so much that's how katie that's why katie's here yep. uh first of all so thank you thanks so much to them for supporting the show uh right here in beachview the original slice on broadway on broadway as well as their other locations main street in carnegie pa and over at pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates uh so they have been uh they were just featured in i think discover pittsburgh i saw today uh, so congratulations to them for getting uh, the word out there again. It's good stuff. Um, I, I, somebody like messaged me when they came into town. Like they, they're like, "Is that slice on Broadway really worthwhile?" I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't BS you on sponsors. <laughs> we don't we don't have crappy sponsors uh, on here. And then and they're great guys. Um, and uh, yeah, we always have a good time. And uh, I try to give them a high five. Uh, that challenge is still out there. Uncle Crappy, I, I, I want to know if you did this yet. Uh, if you go in, say, say the awesome cast sent you and get a high five. Don't hit them in the head. Please be careful. But uh, remember, look at the elbow. Uh, but give them a, a awesome cast high five or fist bump, whatever you feel inclined to do, and let them know the awesome cast sent you. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Okay, guys, it is Thanksgiving. It is time to figure out or find out what we are thankful for. It's going to be in technology and internet and social media, all the kind of things that we uh, uh, talk about here um, on the show. Katie, are, is your thing, what you told me earlier, is it going to be cat photos? No, no sorry. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I have two things. Well, I have a new thing and an old thing because I thought about it and there's two things I'm really thankful for tech in this year. A uh, new thing for me uh, is the 360 videos and the photos mm -hmm. uh, and the ability to just devices that easily create them. And, you know, it's, it's 
you can go anywhere. And, and like today I looked online and someone shared it was inside of one of the uh, Egyptian tombs. It was an amazing uh, 360 view where you could just go look around this tomb and it was just fantastic. And uh, personally, well, professionally and um, Psychic Media and Sorgatron had done a um, 360 video for Scarehouse where we had tried to scare people in 360 view. Essentially, it was one of our characters had walked into them. And I was I have not looked at this video in a while and I was shocked. It's up over 100,000 views on YouTube. So it was really cool to see that. And it was something new and exciting to try. And I think uh, there's just so many applications with 360 video and photos that I'm real excited to expand on. And, and like I said, the technology is so easily and readily available and now it's integrated into Facebook and YouTube so it's not the challenge of trying to stitch things together it's like upload go it's magic unfortunately I can't throw a six, show 360 video because it's absolutely murdering this this computer no, over you're fine. here but no absolutely I, and 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 uh, I I did uh while I was packing for Thailand today uh the technology side of things I was like yep we're putting that in here uh, so the Rico <laughs> Theta is going to come with me and uh we're going to be at a lot of pretty cool uh, temples and stuff and james bond island and i can't wait to get some some 360 opportunities with that I've, oh geez the the one thing just popped up over here and scared the crap out of me and the out of the corner of my eye <laughs> our little exorcist <laughs> friend is just kind of glitchily walking towards me on this underpowered computer but uh uh but no uh no absolutely absolutely i love that that, that technology is uh really really working we've had a lot of fun with it like i said the scare house thing was was probably like definitely one of my favorite things we did this year and um, and we did we did a rally with it um, mm -hmm. over in Westmoreland County at the courthouse. We uh, you know so we could see like everybody holding their signs up and everything. Uh, and and yeah, it, it, you know again looking for more opportunities to use it and everything. And um, <laughs> I see. Do you have you have one more thing in here? <laughs> yes, I. This is uh, my shameless niece uh, post. Uh, I'm thankful for FaceTime because uh, my niece does live across the state, or well, mid-state, with state at State College, and so I don't get to see her as often as I'd like. But she's adorable, and thankfully FaceTime and the ease of accessibility for FaceTime for mm -hmm. someone my, like my mom who is not reasonably tech savvy, but not you know high, really super high, that she's easily able to see her niece and communicate with her niece or my niece and her granddaughter. I, I just think it's so cool. And it's it just it's so cool. And it, it, I like to watch her take the camera, the phone from her mom and run around and just get a Charlotte point of view of the world while you're talking to her. <laughs> it, it, it really surprised me. I, I was over at, at my dad's house and, and it, I was actually in awe at the number of FaceTime calls they were doing and receiving. So whether it be. Um, friends of my sisters that, that she went to college with years ago, um, family members. I, I was really surprised. I, I mean, I'm not even one to really talk on the phone, let alone vi video chat, mm -hmm. but it surprised me at the number of conversations they had where it was all video based. And it was, it was to, to your point, it was, it was people that were a decent distance away that they don't always interact with. And it, it just really brought brought everyone together. I mean, they were passing the phone around. Everyone was talking to each other. It, 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 that friction free experience where it's just as easy as dialing the phone. I was I was really surprised how they embraced it, and I think it is because it's just so easy and within reach of of anyone with a iOS device. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because my mom will ask me a question. And I'm like, just just FaceTime me, and I can tell you what you're doing. Like, if I, she wasn't sure how to scan something on her laptop, just just FaceTime me real quick, and then you mm -hmm. can be able to mm -hmm. see what they're seeing without having to go into the laptops and do all the shenanigans. So this is where I'm afraid, like, I'm disconnecting because my again, my dad is like, you know, he's on satellite internet. I've tried FaceTiming with him, and it's just uh, you can't. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can't. Like, it, it's just it's not there. You know, he's he's still living in in like ten years ago of technology right now. Uh, so, but, but still so many, yeah, it's, it's very accessible for things. My mom has bet dialed me on, uh, Facebook or FaceTime several times. So <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Chilla, what are you thankful for? So, so I, I was going to throw in home automation cause it's just such a big part of my home life. But in, in thinking about it, I'm actually one of the things I'm, I'm definitely thankful for is all the 
the kind of comic cons that we have around our tri-state area, whether it be Steel City Con, Wizard World here, Philly, Cleveland. Um, it's really actually kind of brought me together with my soon-to-be brother-in-law. Carlos started to go to the one in Philly. Christopher, he was there last year in Pittsburgh and had a, an amazing time. I know it wasn't necessarily as busy and wasn't one. What I, wizard wanted this year i remember um, he was hanging out with a couple of zombies yeah <laughs> this year i mean he was in he was in the, the the delorean he got in the batmobile he was on mater the tow truck from cars i mean uh, carla had a great time walking around in philly um it's just something that's really brought the the family together um so th- i'm definitely thankful for that and i'm, I'm thankful that they they keep coming back especially like steel city con that's that's three four times a year mm-hmm. that's awesome that's great and great photos that you get to put online too <laughs> <laughs> you get to you get to stretch that photography muscle a bit mm-hmm. so awesome awesome uh geez what am i thankful for um so so i i have so so many years i have been um um collecting <laughs> <laughs> like three thousand dollar prosumer cameras to do my work, right? Because uh, I'm a video producer, so it's like, well, I want to have good hardware, I want to have decent stuff, and and I haven't been able to keep ahead of the curve. Like my good cameras are are still tape based, and I'm trying to upgrade, you know, see if there's some stuff that I can I can tack on to, to turn them digital uh, rather than buying all new cameras because it's really you know not accessible. But just want to get streamlined a little bit. So a, a, a friend of mine uh, had asked. Uh, me to to shoot a their wedding and are like they're pretty much like you know they were i wasn't really hired to do it they just asked can you put a camera up in the corner or something like that um we have some other stuff going on so i was like yeah you know that, that's fine um but i thought i'd do something a little bit different so uh you know i i, I have the old iphone 5s that is kind of my side camera i had this in hand my uh, 6s and uh i grabbed um the gopro and uh did I have any other cameras and that was it i, I should have grabbed the 360 I, I didn't realize how how nice of a church they were going to be in and, and it would have been an amazing 360 view but um so so i basically shot and again i haven't gone back and edited the ceremony itself and there was some difficulties in there uh but uh, to, to to again immediately basically just threw all the clips of all the uh high points of the wedding you know the, the the first dance, the introductions, the the cake cutting, uh, uh, other little bits. Um, the the I like to do candids around around the the photos that they do, which is at the mansions on Fifth, which was tremendous. And and this is a this is a wedding party of pro wrestlers, so it, there was kind of an interesting uh, scene to begin with, right? Um, but to be able to to and and I'm hoping to do this again on this on this Thailand trip too, just to embrace like the smaller technology, you know, like saying okay. You know, don't take it personally that you spent three thousand dollars on a camera. Yet this phone will probably do the job better, easier, quicker than than that that hardware will. So, so I'm trying to adapt to having the right tool for the job a bit more. And again, 360 cameras, GoPros, iPhones, uh, and and the old school cameras, or even some of these smaller Canons that we've been using lately, um, which I think are like eight hundred dollar Canons, but they become like the go-to for us for professional wrestling and uh, just ex- that accessibility. Um, I mean, this is a, this is last year's phone. And even somebody else was doing video, and I, I wanted to catch what model they were using, but um, they, they were using... Uh, um, oh, Ryan, Ryan from Blood on the Leaves. Um, he was showing me uh, some video, some slow-mo stuff he was doing on his phone, which is probably like a Samsung or something like that. Uh, but but even that was very very good video uh, for what it was. Um, but uh, but no, I, I think that that's it's really cool. I'm really thankful for that that kind of uh, mobile tech. I, I don't have to carry as much with me, <laughs> depending on the job for, for especially like lower end jobs or something on the fly or something like that. And 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 again, the Facebook Live stuff is just incredible. You know, we're doing stuff, you know, again, we're at this thing where we're doing this thing with, with, with big rigs and, and pushing things to Facebook Live or even what we're doing here with all this stuff to Facebook Live. But again, just pull this up. When we're doing our boot camps, we just we just bring an iPhone and make sure it's plugged in and on the Wi-Fi and uh, we have the session, right? Uh, not, I mean, it, it's a small room, so, you know, 
don't have to mic it or anything like that. Uh, and we have a nice enough video for us to post and, and people can check out the session. So that's a really cool thing uh, that, that we're able to do. Uh, so I've actually, um, it's something to think about and I don't know if you'd want to use it, but hyperlapse, I'm still using that. It's the, the Instagram hyperlapse app. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm using it for a kind of a steady cam and image stabilization. I keep, I actually use use that a lot at work and then just turn it down to one X speed. So it's not all fast forward and it gives you it it, it trims it down to 720p to 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 get the image stable Mm -hmm. but but it definitely works extremely well i keep forgetting it does a thing thank Mm -hmm. you so much it's even on my phone and i haven't allowed access for it yet (laughs) Uh, it's it's kind of my go-to if i have to film like a a walkthrough of a room or you know how to use a certain technology in a certain room I, i i quite often use it for kind of that entry and and pan pan around the room and then as you I hold up the phone and walk towards something as you pan the camera i mean it gives you a really nice smooth stable video and like i said it, i just slow it down to 1x so it's mm-hmm. not choppy and it, it ends up looking pretty darn good uh is does it take audio in hyperlapse i keep forgetting I don't know because I usually for those tutorials I do voiceovers after the fact. Okay, so so again, I like, think I think it does, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Right, so so like maybe I don't I shouldn't use it for like wedding videos or anything like that where I want to get that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, you know what? Now that now that we mentioned it, it does it does grab audio because I had to turn down all the audio tracks when I did. Mm-hmm. There's when a really I did some other voiceover work. There's a really nice um, if you go to looking for group uh, lfgpgh.com. Uh, they have a video that I know is on their Facebook. Uh, Ryan, ha- Ryan Haggerty, Haggerty again did uh, did that one, and I saw this device also. Uh, Fu Fu Connor um, that was at X Prize had this thing. It's like it's a it's not a jib, but uh, mm-hmm. I forget. You know what I'm talking about? Like kind of the ball thing with the camera that you have your phone attached to. Does it have the pendulum type thing off the bottom? A little bit, a little bit. It's kind of a steady cam thing, and and and. Uh, uh, again, it attaches to your phone to, to do photos, do video. And, and again, the, these are, these are people walking around with like high end DSLRs and then they're using this thing and getting the most dramatic of shots, right? Uh, it, you know, compared to what, what they could get with DSLR, uh, kind of stuff. And both these guys are DSLR guys. So, um, again, that portable technology right now, I feel like, I feel like I am behind the curve that I need to get more add-ons for my phone to do better video. Like, uh, I have a tripod, I have a tripod and I have one of those, um, um, XLR, um, attachments that, so I can like plug a, a microphone into it if I need to. Right. Uh, but that's about mm-hmm. it. Uh, so like I've used that, I've used that, sh- that shore lightning mic right. multiple times and it works great. Right. And I've wanted to get that one for a while too. That's actually, we sent that to our friend, uh, mad Mike for wrestling mayhem show when he was doing interviews um for comic-con and we got great audio out of that you got you got to get some great use out of it uh and nice portable you mentioned thing. That, that uh blue was it the raspberry right mic? right uh did you see and that's usb that's usb and lightning so you can use it in both devices so i wasn't completely sold on it until um andy anako was using it and then showed it off on mac break mm-hmm. this week and i it's like he, he turned it around to, to see the directional audio and everything uh, that that sounds it seems like if you had the budget for it that seems like a really good portable like yeah i have to do this from my hotel room device like more than the blue snowball oh the snowballs the snowballs horrifically large to to pack and carry it, it's and large and i had to take it to work a couple times yeah. and it's just I have this wide it, it's it doesn't this fit in your backpack wide you, bag i that, end up taking a whole different briefcase just to, so i can bring <laughs> it along with me. i have this old toshiba like wide bag that like like just barely it fits my 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 uh pc laptop and the blue snowball and, and that's what we've been using for commentary actually it works really well for commentary uh for wrestling shows like it doesn't get blown out uh, i just plug it in and throw it in audacity and it works really really well uh, so I've been really impressed with that. So, and again, it's not a crazy high end uh, uh, production. So, and, and mm-hmm. again, one of those things where, where you know, depending on your budget and your 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 skill level and stuff, start with that, guys. You know, 
yeah, you want a pretty nice mic. I want to upgrade these mics for what we're doing here uh, because I know they can be better. I know the sound can get better and deeper and 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 and, and pop a little bit more. Uh, but uh, but again, you know, uh, as you go and you build and, and and get a budget for these things, you know, so got to think about hosting first. So <laughs> right now, but um, uh, we had some awesome things, or I'm sorry, thankful things awesomely thankful things from our audience uh trey in the chat room is thankful for the jukebox apps that allow me to play madonna songs in grungy bars and no one knows it's me <laughs> except for the times i wear madonna shirts they sort of figure it out then mm-hmm. i you know i'm always so i don't frequent bars a lot but i every time i pass one of those jukeboxes that that have like all the bells and whistles like that and like mp3 download something so it's like it's not like you know, you, you can get more songs on there and everything, and they're always updated. Um, I'm always fascinated about that technology as well, so it's pretty cool to see. I, I actually know people that wait for for others to check in at certain bars, mm-hmm. and then they go in and play obnoxious music because they know their friends there and they they know the music that they don't <laughs> so, like. Wait, so they're remotely <laughs> doing that? Yeah, so you you can remotely leverage that service, so you can actually you can actually trigger jukeboxes anywhere. <laughs> at least the ones i've seen from touch tones the touch tones ones yeah you can trigger those anywhere so if, you, if you're watching for people to to check in somewhere on foursquare or facebook or, or whatever um or if you, if you if you want to impress someone and say hey i played this song for you and text them mm-hmm. um they can be like where are you at and it's you can you can run it right off the phone app that's awesome. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> I remember, uh, so, like, they had to, uh, South South Hills Village Mall, um, I don't know if they still do this, but they hooked up, they put TVs in the in the uh, food court, and I feel like they were just running commercials last time I was there. But uh, you, like, they would do a vote and request for the next music video to, to play, and you could actually... I, I, I did see that. I don't know if they still do that, but yeah, I, yeah. I remember that. It was a couple years ago. In the sitting in there and it, it was a pretty cool cool feature mm-hmm. so you know there's me like picking every nirvana song that i could think of uh, uh you know to drop into the food court so i uh, you know i can only take so much beyonce uh also uh amanda narcissi of uh bold pittsburgh boldpgh.com i believe is her address now i uh, said that she's thankful for toys like the uh cosmo uh from anki anki Anki, Anki. They're the ones that did the car, the the racetrack cars, right? The the really cool, yes. like mobile ones. Um, this, yeah, I, I I've saw. I don't think we got to this on the show. Uh, but these are like interesting little guys, and they have like a very expressive LED face, and not creepy like the Furbies or the new Teddy <laughs> Ruxpin these days, right? Uh, so it, it's it's. I, I don't know how would you describe it. It's like a little um um like 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 cat mobile, you know, work car in a in a robot toy is that does that seem right <laughs> i'm trying to get this visualized for your for for your audio guys out there uh but uh no it's pretty cool is he playing he's playing uh pong on his screen too so uh those are pretty cool uh but robots robot toys not that like weird dog from a couple years ago also she said the uh dgi maverick pro drone i uh, it's a uh, drone that fits in your pocket <laughs> and hopefully less hopefully harder to crash as uh you know i need i need the drone i need to get in the drones 2017 needs to be the year of the drone for me because that kraus kraus actually just ordered one off of or if it's nine to five toys they found like they found like a stellar deal on a, on a drone that actually i think it was like under under 40 bucks and had like a training mode and all kinds of stuff. So there you go. That's what I need. That's what I need. <laughs> yeah. Kraus, if you're out there, can you pass that to me so I can, uh, uh, start my, my Christmas list and see if Santa will bring me something, uh, because something, <laughs> yeah, something with a training mode or something that it's okay if I crash it before I start attaching GoPros to it. Cause <laughs> I, I just, I gotta get into that. I, I just feel like it's way too, too far off. Um, side note to that, we do have an interview well, last year. I remember I was talking about the drone that we did a video for, for uh, CME engineering. Uh, I do have an interview coming up. I think it's coming up in two weeks. If I have my schedule, right. Uh, uh, with the, the, the guy, one of the guys, the engineers there that that's kind of heading up that project. And we updated a little bit about how it's been going. And, and they're actually to the point where they think they need a second drone. And this is the one that would like map, and do a 3D rendering of, uh, of of landscapes for them. 
for 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 whatever needs they needed. Uh, so uh, so look out for that on the awesome chat feed as well. So that's great. Uh, thank you everybody for your awesome things or your your thankful things. Jeez, I'm just in awesomely that thankful the, things. Awesomely thankful things <laughs> for things. Of course. Uh, <laughs> And and thank you to wife of the show for dropping all the single ladies into the chat for me. Uh, there you go. This will get us kicked off. <laughs> there you go. Um, but anyways, I'll probably bounce this from YouTube too while we're at it now. I'm thinking about it. Uh, so <laughs> a couple of stories here. Uh, we'll touch on real quick here. See what time it is there. Um I thought this was interesting because having seen it in the Uber cars, uh, Tesla is uh, 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 kind of showing what what it looks like, uh, uh, what their cars see, basically. And uh, there's a little video here I'll queue up and, for you guys out there. Uh, but, uh, no, I, you know, again, this is this is I, I just saw a story today about self-driving cars in Boston and, and people I've been running to on, on the Uber and Lyfts and telling me how horrible Boston is for driving. Uh, but, uh, this is theirs and this is, again, this is, you know, Tesla is building this in uh, software upgradable to, to, um, you know, all their cars coming off the line at this point, uh, as of a few weeks ago. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a different, it's a different kind of, it feels like it's a different kind of metaphor than what I've seen on the Uber. Cause Uber, like it, it showed everything from top down. Cause of course they have the LIDAR on the top and everything just like looks like boxes, right? But this is actually kind of identifying things um, kind of in moving boxes, it seems. Um, like Kind of like uh, when my security camera I did in the Raspberry Pi notices motion and puts a box around it, right? So, I don't know. All right. So, uh, what stories have you guys uh, uh, kind of got on your minds this week? I have a smart bed for Chilla. A smart bed? <laughs> That's like the only is it is it is that the only room of the house we haven't touched with these smart things for a while? Chilla, you can actually with this smart mattress, it works with Alexa. It's a smart mattress, and it'll tell you about your sleep tracking. It'll wake it'll wake you up during a certain time during your sleep cycle. It analyzes all those shenanigans. It also allows you to heat one side of the bed or the other at a certain Ooh, temperature. Okay, okay, I'm sold. And Ooh. it makes white noise. What? <laughs> it's built in white noise. Uh... Yes, it works. Uh, That's really cool. It even works with your smart coffee makers and your Philips Hue lights. So you could just have lights, like these lights wake you up in the morning so pleasantly during your particular time in your sleep cycle, and you'll have coffee made. Your life is complete. Oh, geez. So this is the Jetsons bed, right? Is it going to also like flip you up out of bed when you hit the, hit the alarm <laughs> too many amazing. times? Is this what I need? That's definitely what I need. Yes, Eat sleep. What? I'm looking at their website. It's 8sleep.com. Okay. Introducing the smart match. The price was in there for the full. I need a queen. So what was the full? Was it like <laughs> a $950, yeah. right? That's okay. Yeah, and okay. mattresses that's, aren't cheap. I was going to say, that's not terrible considering. That's not terrible. So, cause, I mean, because we had to replace a mattress. It's not the mattress. So it's, it's, a thousand, it's $1,050. That's, that's on par with an average, decent, nice mattress. And you get 20% off this week for Black Friday. Oh, <laughs> Ian! Thanks twenty for the. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I, I need to buy buy two hundred square feet of tile for my basement, so I won't be able to get it. Is but there a smart tile? Th this is tile? definitely going on like the the springtime shopping list. Oh, please go down to the bottom of the website if you're on the page for eightsleep dot com. Uh, there, there's this nice infographic. It says bounces like latex, contours like foam, and they have a, a scale. It's like too soft, perfect, to too hard. The too soft is a pile of feathers, followed by a bean bag, and perfect, of course, is the eight matters. And then you start moving to the too hard side, and it's a church pew and a boulder. <laughs> <laughs> it just cracked me up. <laughs> they, they also they also sell. It looks like just the tracker device. Hmm. So you can buy. It looks like a, it looks maybe it's like a fitted sheet of sorts. Mm -hmm. Track your sleep, warm up your side of the bed, and connect with your smart home. So you can get you can get just like the overlay for three fifty, oh. and I can get twenty percent off that. Oh, oh. this is dangerous. <laughs> Unfortunately, the site is very very 
very rough, so I can't get to that uh, uh, infographic here. Uh, but man, that. <laughs> Better, you're killing me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, Tilla needs this." Okay. And, your, and your budget, <laughs> and your budget is dead now after that one. <laughs> so check out Eight Sleep, like the number eight, but but spelled out. EightSleep.com. If you want to check that out, it's great. Or if you want to buy it for Chilla for Christmas. Um. Oh, I didn't <laughs> see this. So while we we're talking about Tesla, Tesla powers the and and island from the sun. Which one of you guys put this in here? So I put that one in there. I, okay. I thought this was really, really cool. And one of the reasons I thought it was not only are they powering an island from the sun based on a um, a, a solar, a, a large solar microgrid, mm -hmm. um, they're actually using the, the power packs from the Teslas. So the 5,328 solar panels are hooked up to 60 Tesla power packs. Jeez. Um, so that if, if they go, they can go three days without sunlight, mm -hmm. um, and they don't have to worry about anything. And, and this actually replaces where this, where this Island is. They, they originally had to burn, um, fuel for generators and they were going through 300 gallons of fuel per day. Um, and this, the, these solar panels have completely solar panels, uh, coupled with the the power packs have completely replaced the the need for for any of that gasoline that's awesome so i thought not, not only not only are they not burning through gasoline all the emissions and pollution and everything else um they've they've completely gone solar so i, I think this is this just goes to show the power of tesla's trying to create a car um the power the the same power pack they're they're looking at for the car they're they're now reusing for as a kind of power storage for, for solar panels. So I thought this was really, really cool. It's awesome. Like, it's good to see these kind of use cases. Say, Hey, we've been able to pull this off here. Um, I'm still like, cause I know solar city is here cause I'm still waiting. I had an engineer friend kind of explain to me why, why solar panels are a really bad idea for my house here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I'm, I'm really kind of curious to see like, Hey, this works in the tropics, but at least, Hey, if, if we if we deploy solar panels to all the tropical places, you know, in in the world or or southern states or or whatever the case may be, I mean that's a that's a significant, you know, off the grid, you know, change. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's really cool to see. So you guys know, uh, you know, this year I I got to uh, uh, dive into Airbnb. I got, I got a few things, including a 1984 vintage camper uh, just off the shores of Erie, PA. Uh, but <laughs> or my my excursions to uh, Los Angeles and San Diego, but they had a really cool announcement, uh, and I'm I'm really interested to see how this goes. Uh, so they uh they said they're going beyond spare rooms with experiences and places are their ideas. So this is this is kind of a a kind of a guided tour kind of thing. It's like, hey, I want to take you on a tour of Pittsburgh and show you the stuff. Like, like, like the idea is like, you know, uh, hey, come here and 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 uh, I'll, I'll I'll take you to uh, Mount Washington and the uh, Duke Canyon Klein and 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 all the all the hot spots here. Uh, so they they sell them as trips now. Um, you know, rent as part of the airbnb experience so uh so i think it's going to be really interesting to see how this is and especially as somebody that i have not traveled very much because of budgetary concerns like i i think this might be more accessible for people um and it could be geez make that you know i give some pittsburgh trips you know i'm i'm, I'm kind of i i think that would be kind of cool to do you could be a tour guide you could be a de facto tour guide chilla don't you want to show like you could Maybe you could do tours of the PNC Tower with this. Ooh, <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> so, or, I mean, if if, if I mean, if you if you do some pretty cool stuff even around your house, you could do do house tours. I mean, I've seen. Uh, speaking of Solar City, I mean, there was there was a house tour in Normont just based on the the solar panels that were that were put up there and the house renovations they were doing. So, yeah, I, I think this is an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, um, speaking of experiences, but um, Bethany and Casey, um, they actually just finished, and I, it's out actually on Airbnb, um, they actually built a, a, a tiny house mm -hmm. for that. Um, so if you want the tiny house experience in the Pittsburgh area, um, you can you can find that out on 
out on Airbnb. There you go. Hey, look for one in the Beachview area here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm sure there's going to be mention about t- chickens on property. I know they're raising chickens. <laughs> they, they actually put a privacy fence up, so the the tiny house is actually kind of segregated from from the rest of their property. So mm-hmm. it kind of does give you a full tiny house experience um, on uh, kind of almost on its own little property. I'm trying to see if I can find it here. That's, I'm, I'm looking for it as well. Carla brought up pictures of it because she went over and saw it the I other know, day. There's one. Oh, this looks like the might be the spot. There's a forty-six dollar one. Looks like in their neighborhood over there. Uh, no, it's 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 no, ninety-nine. It's ninety-nine. I got a seventy-five. Maybe it's not available. Maybe 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 I'm on a list and I'm not allowed to rent there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just looking at the site a little bit for trips. Let me see if I can pull this back up again. Have this thing updated. Um, and it's gone. Uh, but no, yeah, pulling up the places and the 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 trips and everything like that. Uh, there's a North Shore tour, uh, surfing and culture, cooking and community experience for one, painting and art gallery, uh, uh, beer and brewing for three days for 280 bucks. There's actually some reviews on this. Let's see what this one does. And I got this over here on this computer so we can kind of see it a little bit. About your host. This one owns LA's go-to home brewing supply store, certified beer judge. So this is going to be an extension of like if you have some kind of business, right? Um, I mean, I could see something where, uh, uh, Chilla, Chilla, we should team up and do like a Pittsburgh tech tour. That would be awesome. Like, let's go check out, you know, have a deal where we go to CMU and, 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 uh, I don't know, is there anything open in CMU we can go to (laughs) or the Carnegie science center or wherever the case may be. So that's cool. So, yeah, no. Okay. So they, they got this lined up like day one, multi-level beer and food class. They'll be meeting at Eagle rock public house, which is a food offshoot of Los Angeles first craft brewery. Hop from brewery to brewery for day two, and also learn to brew on day three. Doug, are you out there? Are you checking this out? This is a uh, this is this seems like the right thing for you and your, your your brewing friends as well. Or you can do a barbecue tour. There you go. There you go. Uh, Yinslabbarbecue.com. Look for them soon on the Airbnb places. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> that'd be great. So um, so there you go. Um, aside from that, quick notes. What's this? Oh, is this is this it? Okay, let's pull this up. Pittsburgh's only tiny house. It is on wheels, ladies and gentlemen. There it is on the video. Um, uh, Casey is the uh, uh, proprietor here on the thing, and uh, that's great. Yeah, because I remember them asking about stuff like permits and stuff, because they're like, it's it's a house on wheels, so what do we need for this? Um, but uh, yeah, ever want to stay in a tiny house just to see what it's like? <laughs> no, now you have your chance. And the best thing is they can take it with them if they move. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. great. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's going for $99 a day, which is, uh, that's a great rate for where you're at. Um, and it's right here in an interesting neighborhood in pittsburgh so go check it out great stuff all right well it sounds like chill has got company so we got to get out of here uh (laughs) uh, (laughs) um and i think that's about oh the other thing um, real quick real 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 quick i i I really i really want to play with the new macbooks so i gotta get myself in an apple store i think they have them in by now uh but the uh there's a video of somebody running doom on the touch bar across the top of the uh, new MacBook Pro. I mean, you know, it's not really the resolution it was made for, but it's definitely running, and you're definitely slaughtering very tiny demons on that thing. Uh, but uh, but there it is. It, it, it's completely happened. That's what somebody described on one of the podcasts of like, well, basically Apple took a uh, Apple Watch and jammed it into the top of the laptop. Uh, so and it is it is it's like own iOS device and everything, especially with the Touch ID that's built in. Um, I just want that Touch ID. I just love the idea of just the touch ID to unlock my computer. I'll be honest with you. So the so, so kind of two two ways to to kind of get a portion of that experience. Um, if you have an Apple Watch, um, you can now use the the watch to unlock your device. And then right. I actually put a link in, um, and I do realize we got to go, but um, I put a link into Touche, which actually allows you to bring up the Touch Bar on your on your screen and if you're running duet display you can actually take and mimic the touch bar um on your ipad 
and use it while you're leveraging your your MacBook Pro that you have. So kind of if you kind of want to get the feeling for what you would get, um, I thought that was really really cool, and I'm actually looking forward to kind of playing around with it, especially for some of the applications I have that are that do work with the Touch Bar. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought you would say if you really want to get that experience, all you have to do is run a Windows version of Doom and just squeeze the window down tiny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, that, that would work too. So. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Katie, do this. At Kate Dutters on the Twitter. Yes. I, I think that's it. <laughs> it's like Kate Marie PGH on uh, Instagram. I put a lot more like things on Instagram than I've put on Twitter. I've or noticed. Facebook. Yeah. I've noticed. How about those those sharing stories thing? I think I shared something with the other day to try it out. Yes. I like I like the sharing like, stories. It's everything that I loved about Snapchat, except I don't have to feel like a noob on Snapchat anymore. <laughs> actually i feel like that snapchat got me ready for instagram as it is today <laughs> so it was a training yeah it was a training so expect guys if you're if you're friends with me on instagram i uh, expect more messages from me because it was actually kind of fun i'm trying to get back into stories too yeah uh so i think that's that's a pretty cool feature they added there uh so check it out do people still tweet their turkeys is that still a thing? I remember just like Instagram was just like everybody. This is what our turkey looks like. Our- I did that last year. <laughs> uh, I'll do it again this year. I'll, I'll let you know what my airplane food looks like. Yay. Because <laughs> I'll be. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, follow me at Soratron on the Instagram and the Twitter. And uh, um, I think there will be some very interesting tweets over the next uh, roughly two weeks, I guess, at this point. Um, as I find out what an 18 hour flight to China looks like and <laughs> see what tech, I, I understand they have some pretty good entertainment systems on there. I'm not, I'm not taking any chances. I'm downloading as much of the season of Lucha Underground onto my lap, onto my iPad as possible here. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll see if I, if, if I go absolutely insane with that. I was getting tips from our friends that, um, one of our, our wrestling friends actually went to Russia. And uh, t- tell me about his experience on the plane there. And there are actually a couple of them that, that went over there. Uh, I've been doing that. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if they let me drink on there to ease the pain. And uh, John Chachilla at ChillaTech.net. Chilla on the Twitter. And I think I'm Chilla579 on the Instagram. Because I had like a, my name was taken and it was before it was integrated with Facebook. So. Yeah, it's chill of five seven nine on the instagram a lot of a lot of con picks out, out there so go check it out awesome go check it out awesomecast.net for all the links and everything follow us on uh, patreon if you want to support the show if you like this if you like the interviews that we've been checking out uh really good interview thanksgiving if you really need something to take your mind off of the family and can sneak away and put the headphones in we're going to have an awesome chat posting with gridwise a local company here out of alpha lab that just went through demo day and uh, they are trying to gather data for uh, drivers of Lyft and Uber. And you might be interested in it if you're not a Lyft or Uber driver and you'll find out why in the interview. So go check that out. Uh, It'll be on the awesome chat. And I think all the links are fixed now for awesome chat. And also we should be live currently, if not very soon on tunein.com for the first time. Uh, so if uh, uh, check us out on there if you like tune in and have not been able to get us on there now, uh, the all the awesome cast properties should be on there now. So, uh, so thank you everybody for joining us. Everybody in the chat room, Trey, uh, Missy on the uh, producing side up there with the tweets all night, and of course Wheels joining us as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, thank you been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.